All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I am going through a series of video presentations for the Rankin Technical College AWD Application and Web Development 1111.NET Framework with Web Databases class. And in particular, I'm going through the chapters in our textbook, which is ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework and CSS by Lee Naylor. So far, I did an introductory thing where I just went over what was in the book, and I've done Chapter 1, which was a very simple little introduction. Now we're into Chapter 2, Creating Views, Controllers, and a Database from model classes. Notice, as the author says right here, in this chapter, we will jump right into the project and add some basic model classes for products and categories. Now, it's important to realize, says we will use these to create a database using entity framework code first. So again, in other words, we are going to create model classes from those model classes we will generate the database all right and as the author says he will show you how to set up a database context class and also how to specify a connection string create a database from code and finally add new views and controllers to manage and display the product and category data now, I have come back up here, but I did not bring back up. So, recent files. Again, remember, I called mine BS2 for Baby Store 2. All right, I'm going to go back here to my Solution Explorer, and here's my project. Not a lot in it right now. All right, so I'm just going to follow the lead from the book. Entity Framework Code First allows the creation of databases from classes. To start this chapter, we will create two new model classes. We're going to have a zero or one-to-many relationship between categories and products. Notice what it says. A category may have many products. It may be a brand new category where it has zero products. Or it may be a category that's been around for years that has hundreds, thousands, or more products. But a product, if it was just created, either does not belong to a category yet, or at most can belong to one category. Now, I can come in here and cheat, grab all this code, copy it to the clipboard, and boom, throw it in. I'm not going to do that. What that means is two things. First, it's going to take a little longer for me to write the code. All right, tough. I'll live with it. All right, but I think with you, the same thing. You learn by doing. You don't learn by copy and paste. All right, so I'm going to come in here. And as we are told to do, all right, I'm going to come in and right-click on my models folder. Notice these are all closed, so I'm going to right-click on the Models folder. I'm going to choose Add, and on at the very bottom, I'm going to choose Class. All right, this will be named Product, so it'll be Product.cs or C Sharp. So, Product, hit Enter, and there's the beginning of my Product class. All right, Public Class Product. So what I want to do is I want to put in three, six, I'm sorry, six different lines. And these six lines are going to basically all, um, they're going to represent fields. Okay. Now to do this, I want to put in six properties. And I believe if I type in prop and type tab, tab, notice what I get. All right. So I want public int. ID, that'll be a get set. Now I can I can keep doing prop, tab, tab, all right, or, you know, whatever is easiest for you, I can go back to this one. 
you know, and, and put it in like that. I'm just going to keep doing the prop, tap, tab. See that I'm not the most fleet of foot here. Prop, tab, tab. So the second one is going to be a string. And it's going to be name. You'll notice that all of the fields in here, all of the fields that are in here are in uppercase, the field names. Don't think you have to do that, but I think it's more convention. Notice this one says int question mark, which means it is possible for that to be null. All right, and the reason for that, just so you're aware of it, the reason for that is it's possible for a product to be created that is not yet in a category. That's why the question mark is there. If we didn't have the question mark there, the product immediately upon its inception, conception, whatever you want to say, would have to be placed into a category. All right, and here this is virtual. So we want here namespace, the name of our project, dot models, public class product, public int ID gets set, public string name gets set, public string description gets set, public decimal price gets set, public int question mark, category ID gets set, public virtual category category get set. And I believe that as soon as we make the category um, table, which is what we're going to do next, all right, I think that that's going to fix this error right there. All right, so I'm just going to hold off on that for right now. In fact, I guess it went away. That's even better. So this is what we have. And as we jump back and forth to our book, and I'm going to keep doing this, as I oft times do, and I have to watch my time. I'm at eight minutes, but this is probably, you know, my last lecture was 54 minutes, which is really too long. I'd like to keep it to about half that. All right. So as we go in here, as the author says, ID will be the primary key for the products table in our database. Name will be the product name. Description will be the product description. Price will be the product price. Category ID will be set up as a foreign key in the database. As it says, we have allowed this to be empty by setting the type to int question mark. This shows that a product does not need to belong to a category. All right. Now it says, this is crucial to avoid the scenario where upon deletion of a category, all products in that category are also deleted. That's also known as cascading deletes. For lack of better words, and sorry if it sounds a bit morbid, but what they're saying is if you kill the parent, the kids die as well. All right. Finally, we've got category. And category is referred to as a navigation property. Now, I want to break out of here, go into here, and type in ASP.NET navigation property. 
and see what they have to say about this. This is from Microsoft Docs, so it's probably pretty good. A navigation property is an optional property on an entity type that allows for navigation from one end of the association to the other end. They do not carry data. They have a name. They have the association. All right. They give an example here. It says, for example, suppose a navigation property orders nav prop exists on a customer and navigates a one-to-many relationship between customer and order. All right. Here's an example right here. This is probably a better example. All right, so we've got what here? Three different things. We've got a book, and we've got a one-to-many relationship between publisher and a book. So one publisher may publish zero, one, or more books, but every book is published by just one publisher. And here we also have a many-to-many -many relationship where zero, one or more books can be written by zero, one or more authors, and every zero, one or more authors can write zero, one or more books. So it says here the navigation properties, publishers and authors are defined on the book. The navigation property books is defined both for the publisher and for the author. What this ends up doing in here is it shows the relationship. What you're doing, this is my verbiage, you know, Microsoft may not like it, may not agree with it, whatever, but it is making, when you are using code first as we are doing, it is basically kind of creating a roadmap for the entity framework so it knows how to set things up. All right, now maybe that was not a, a great definition. You know, you go in here and there's more. Here is, here is entity framework relationships. Maybe that would have been better to go over that. I don't know. All right, and there's other things as well. So, it says navigation properties are normally defined as virtual so they can be used in certain functionalities such as lazy loading. Now we've talked a little bit, all right, about things that happen during runtime as opposed to things that happen during compile time. When the system needs something when, when it's compiled, all right, if it needs something right away as soon as the program has been compiled, that's typically referred to as early binding. It's also referred to as eager loading. When the system doesn't need something until the program's running and it basically it asks for it, all right, that's known as late binding or lazy loading. All right, I mean, when you think about it in real life, let's suppose, I don't know, um, trying to think of a good example here. All right. When you think of something that would be more like, as an example, like eager loading, okay? If I am going to, if I am going to rent a truck, let's say that I'm going to move from one place to another, and I'm going to rent a truck, they will require some kind of a down payment be it virtually with money or a credit card or something before they give me the truck. That's eager loading or early binding. If it was set up that I didn't have to provide anything, anything at all, until I grabbed the truck and returned it, or I grabbed the truck to use it, etc., then it would be lazy loading or late binding. Maybe not that great of an, uh, of, a, uh, of an analogy. So next, we're supposed to come in 
and add another new class named category with these three things in it. So let's do that next. So again, hopefully you've noticed when I came in here, now we've got the product class right there. I'm going to again right mouse click, again choose add, again choose class, and this class will be called, as we're told, category.cs. There it is. And it has three fields. So again, I can prop, tab, tab. And the first one is an integer, which will be, again, ID. Prop, tab, tab. The second one is a string, and it will be the name. And the third will be virtual. And it will say, I collection product products get set. Now, you may find that to be a little bit confusing. All right, notice we now have our category in here too. Okay. So let's jump back to our text. And the author says, the ID is the primary key, the name is the name of the category, the products is another navigational property that will contain all the product entities that belong to that category. Now, before I add the context, which I'm going to do, we are told, and I, I didn't do this, I'm going to jump into both of these. Notice we're not using system, system link, and system web. It says we can come in here and remove the unnecessary ones. So I did that, and I will do the same thing in here. Again, I'm getting that. I don't know why. All right, so we are told to do both those. All right, and again, I think that'll go away, so. Generate class category in a new file. Well, we've already done that, so I saved. I think we'll be fine, all right? Okay, so the next thing that we are to do according, whoops, I'm sorry. The next thing we are to do according to our text is to add a database context. This is done differently. This is done differently than the way it was done in the examples that I showed you earlier. All right, earlier we went and we created the database context class, I believe at least, right in the models folder. The author here is saying, Again, the database context class is the main class that coordinates functionality between the entity framework and the rest of the program. All right, so we want to create a new folder by right-clicking on the project and calling it DAL, which is short for Data Access Layer. All right, so I'm going to come in here, right mouse click on the name of my property, and click Add, new folder and I'm going to call that DAL all in caps for data access layer and there it is right there all right so create this new folder now we want to add a class to that folder that's called store context that class is basically going to come in and it's going to set these DB sets up. It's going to let us know, for lack of better words, that there will be two tables right now in our database that are going to be called products in categories. All right, so let's come in here and do that. So we're supposed to come in here and in our DAL, we'll just call it that, we want to add a new class that's called store context. So I'm going to right mouse click, add class. Again, 
store context dot cs there it is and we need to use in fact let's let's leave all these in there and let's type this in the first thing you're going to notice is i'm going to get an error almost right away so i'm going to type in public d db set products products get set okay and then I'm going to copy this line to the clipboard don't know what happened there something did okay that got hosed let's do that again all right now we're, we're going to come in here we're going to do the same thing with category category Category, and this will be categories and you'll notice I'm getting error messages why it looks at the DB set here and it says I'm confused so it says show potential fixes well one thing we can do is we can do put a using system data dot entity I put that in my errors go away all right that was the one right here we, we can get rid of the ones we don't need, so we can remove all the unnecessary ones. But the other thing that we should use in here, it doesn't recognize products, it doesn't recognize category. So I'm going to click here and it says we could generate this stuff, or we could put in using the name of our project.models. All right. Now, it still doesn't like something in here. It says generate class category. Well, what did we have in here? I could have done something wrong. It sure wouldn't be the first time. Looks like I spelled it category. I did. All right. So, let's can we come in here and uh I'm going to do a rename and rename it to category and hit enter. And it says you're renaming a file. Would you like to rename all of the references to it? Yes. So now it's back to category. And let's go look at our store context. And notice, boom, there's no mistake anymore. Now I like to move these over one more than they are. All right. Now, the author says in here, this context class derives from the system.data.entity. And there is typically one database context class per database. But if you've got a more complex project, you could have several. Each DB set property that you see right here. All right, so each DB set property in the class is known as an entity set. Each typically corresponds to a table in the database. The products property that you see right there will correspond to the products table we'll create eventually in our database. The category will basically be the categories table in our database. The code that you see in blue right there tells the EF or the entity framework to use the product class and to use, you know, to, to represent a row in the products table and the category class to represent a row in the categories table. All right. Let's do a save all, because I think that's a good time to do that. All right, jumping back in here. So we just did this. And now they talk about specifying a connection string. All right, now we have a database context and some model classes. 
So we need to tell the entity framework how to connect to the database. Add a new entry to the connection string that's inside of the web.config file. It's very important when you do this, there is a web.config, I don't know, is it under views? Yeah, right there. You don't want to use that one. Close that puppy. We don't want to use that web config. All right, we want the one down here, which is our main web config. All right, and you can, there's a lot of stuff in here. This web config, for lack of better words, what it does is it's, these are the project settings. All right, and it says we should find our connection strings. There it is right there. Now, the connection string that's in here right now, to my knowledge, this one that you see in here, all right, that's the one that sets up our, um, it's used for our authentication and authorization that we'll cover in a later chapter, all right? Underneath that one, we are to add this one. This is one time where I am going to do a copy because there's so much to type here. All right. Now the system says here we are to connect to a database and that database will be named babystore.mdf. All right. And the way it's set up, that babystore.mdf should be in our app data folder in our project. The author says here that he has chosen to store the database there so that when we do a copy later, all right, when we copy the project, the database should be copied with it. And then it tell you about an alternative way of doing it right there. I'm not going to go into that. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go to my code. Right underneath my first connection setting, I'm going to paste that one in. All right. And typically, that should all be in one line. What you find when you go through this enough is that some of the stuff that's in here, for lack of better words, is a little bit quirky. Sometimes it expects things to be done and done in a certain way. And if you basically do it, oh, it's almost done that way, but not, not exactly, all right? Well, then what you find out is you could be hosed a little bit later, all right? So, again, I'm going to do a save all. I don't like this web config open if I can help it, so it's now closed. Again, as they mentioned in the text here, see, I'm already at 28 minutes, so um, as soon as I get done with this, before I add the controllers and the views, we're going to stop, and this will be part one, all right? But the author says here, the other existing connection string is used for the data that is used for the database was automatically connected and it's for authentication that we cover I think it was chapter 7 yes chapter 7 which is on authentication and authorization it's also worth noting that you don't need to even define a to define a connection string if you don't it'll use a default one why do that why leave any doubt all right I, you know, what I have learned, if nothing else, over my tenure as a, a software professional, as an instructor, etc., don't trust the software. If it's a choice between trusting the software and doing it myself, I'm doing it myself when possible. All right. So I'm going to come back in and one more time, I'm going to do a save all. And before I come back in here and I start on my adding controllers and views, I'm going to stop right now, and the adding controllers and views will start part two of this chapter.